My name is Steve and welcome to my shop. This is part two and the final assembly of the manual knurling tool that I have been building. I know I started it a long time ago and believe me I've, I would have loved to have had it done earlier. I just finished it up and it's been two or three months since I started it I'm sure. But when I first aired the uh, video I had a lot of questions about a manual knurler and it's something that I'm actually quite familiar with. Here's one that I have and I used in, when I was in the automotive business and had my automotive machine shop we also did electrical rebuilding and this one was specifically made to knurl armature shafts that had the bearing had spun on and you could take and, and run a knurl on it and with a little Loctite you could press the bearing back on it and save an armature so it's something that I was familiar with there's also one called a Neural Master which I believe is in the McMaster car catalog and I'll, I'll post a picture of that I'll put that picture up now you can take a look at it they're very expensive and you'll notice the resemblance of it to a pipe cutter that's just had knurling wheels installed in it well here is the finished product this is my knurling tool and as I mentioned in the first video I built this for my son who is a bicycle repair technician and they use it to knurl the handlebars so that they'll fit tight in the stem sometimes when they get loose the the riders will actually twist them in the stem and, and they wear out so they can put a new knurl on it. I needed to get this done so I don't have a lot of the details of the machining. I did take machining uh, shots as I was finishing it up. They're pretty much self-explanatory. There's not a whole lot of explanation in them but let's go and I'm going to take you over to the milling machine and we'll finish machining this up and in the final part of it we'll assemble it. I want to thank everybody for sticking by and uh, with me. It's been an interesting holiday season to say the least. Uh, I, I have been sick, non-COVID related, but I have been sick. And a matter of fact, my wife has still got a cold. So um, I just haven't gotten a lot of shop time in up to this point. So let's get started and finish up this knurling tool.
Okay, the jaw is just about finished. Now, all I have left to do on the jaw is to mill this down to the proper length and then I gotta make a plate which will screw to that tenon and hold it in place. So next I'll measure the distance from here to this face and transfer that over to the tenon. According to my calculations, I've got 85 thousandths to take off the length of the tenon. So I'm going to take off 80 and check it. Z I think I'll go 75 in two passes so there's 80 or that's 40 35 that takes it to 75 going to measure it now, see where I'm at. Yeah. That looks like the number right there. Let me try it. about perfect so now I'll drill two 1032 holes and this piece will be done I'll spot drill I'm going to move down three quarters of an inch. And I'll put my tap drill in and bring you back. Got a number 21 drill in for my 1032.
a piece of material for the keeper. I'm going to take it out and try it for size. I'm going to square off this end and measure it out to length and then cut it off. Take it over to the bench, measure it off, and then we'll cut it to length.
going to drill this for a half 13 helicoil. I'm using a half inch 13 threaded rod for my screw on it and I think that the stainless steel insert will give me more durability on the threads. Now let's put my drill in, well drill hole. Pretty much finished up on the mill. Now I'm going to cut the end of this shaft down to 3 8 to fit into this hole. That's the jaw. So take and face it off first.
Okay, that's as far as I want to go. I'm going to set up my uh, stop. Okay, I'm right at three eighths now. I got to take a little bit more off. I need some clearance, so I think I'll take another five thousand off. That's good. Now what I'm going to do is take and bevel the end so that it match. It will go in a little bit deeper into the recess from the drill. I think I like that. Now what I'm going to do is cut a groove in here. <coughs> that will be used to capture this in the jaw with a roll pin. So I got to cut a little groove radius in there. I'll bring you back when I set that up. All right, I'm all set up. Now I'm going to use my radius cutter and cut a groove as far out as I can get to the end without losing my shoulder and I'll be cross drilling this piece to put a roll pin through that'll capture that in the groove. There it is there. I'm going to, that pin will fit right in the radius and that will go in the crosshead. I'll drill it and that will go right through and capture that. Well, there are all the parts cleaned up, deburred. So let's put it together for the final time.
Well, there it is. I'm going to take it over, get a piece of material, and try it out. Well, let's give it a try. This is a piece of aluminum. Keep in mind that this is designed to be used on aluminum product. This is not made for steel. It is going to be used primarily on bicycle handlebars that have been uh, that have come loose in the neck and they have a factory neural on them and the factory neural has been round off by moving the handlebars up and down so this is to replace that neural very happy with the way that works perfect Let me take you in a little bit closer so you can see the pattern on the neural pretty happy with that well this has been a long drawn out project I'm glad it's done so I'm going to give my son a call and tell him he can come pick it up